Bitcoin to 100,000 by year's end. If you like price prediction videos, you might like this video. However, before we get to the end, I got to tell you, I'm going to have to give you a little dose of reality and put your feet back on the ground. So I like price prediction just as much as everybody. They're great for hoping and everything else. And I know some people said hoping is, is, just, uh, is just wrong and it shouldn't be. Look, hoping is what gets us through. Let's be honest. We've had a pretty brutal last year and we're just kind of emerging from that. So let's allow ourselves to dream a little bit, but not get crazy. So this was an article from Coindesk and it says price of Bitcoin made 100K by year end from Standard Chartered Bank. So I'm thinking to myself, this is great. By the end of 2023, I'm gonna be loaded because Bitcoin's going up so high. And I'm not gonna read you this entire article because it's wrong. What it really comes down to is this. This is from Reuters. And I took a look at the source material and this is what the analyst actually said. Bitcoin could 100K by the end of 2024, Standard Chartered says. And before we go on, who's Standard Chartered? Well, Standard Charter is a bank located in the UK. One of the oldest banks out there. History of over 160 years in the UK. It's regulated by the Prudential Regulation Authority, Financial Conduct Authority, and is one of the UK's largest banks. I was not aware of that because I am in the States. London serves as the headquarters for the Europe and America's business, focused on facilitating business across Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Next question you're probably asking is, who cares? How big are they? Great question. So I had to pull out their uh, sampling report from 2022, and their total operating income was around 16 billion, 16.2 billion to, to be exact. And for reference to see how big that would compare to say JP Morgan, one of the largest banks in the world, JP Morgan has an annual operating income for 2022 was 46 billion. So 46 billion, 16 billion, now well, it's a couple of billion among friends, right? So we can say it's a little bit of uh, credibility. So here's what the analyst states. First, they state that the so-called crypto winter is over. Bitcoin, and the reason for that is multiple factors. First of all, recent turmoil in the banking sector, stabilization of risk assets as the U.S. Federal Reserve ends its interest rate hiking cycle. Debatable. I think we're going to go up next month. Standard Charter's head of digital asset research, Jeff Kendrick, said in a note this, while sources of uncertainty remain, we think the pathway to $100,000 per Bitcoin level is becoming clear. And that's pretty much it. So that's a great one. And we can just stop there and we can go home and say, great, 100,000 by 2024, I'm fantastic. But let me just give you a little dose of reality, which is this. Price predictions are worthless. I must admit to you, they are, and no one really knows has a crystal ball. Might I remind you that uh, most of these price predictions are incorrect. And here's one as a little history lesson. Citibank, I think it's the 11th largest bank in the world, that analyst said in November 2020 that Bitcoin can go as high as 318,000 by the end of 2022. And it actually closed out at 16.5. And then to take you down a little uh, memory lane, John McAfee in, 20, in 2017 said Bitcoin would go to a million by 2020. I don't think that happened. Tom Lee of Fundstrat said that Bitcoin would go to 25,000 by 2018. I don't think it went above, I mean, I don't think it, uh, it hits lows like 5,000. Tim Draper one of the uh, largest investors out there said that Bitcoin would go to 250,000 by 2022. Still waiting. Max Kaiser, who's everybody loves, I'm sure he'll be at uh, Bitcoin Miami in 2018, said that Bitcoin would go to $100,000 in 2018, thereby being Tom Lee's uh, paltry price prediction of 25,000. And then Bobby Lee came back and said, okay, well, how about half a million by 2028? Again, all these things are great and they give a little hope, but they're kind of ridiculous. And let's not forget me. Uh, I am out there too. In 2020, 2021, I believed that Bitcoin would go to 150,000 by the end of 2021. I was totally wrong on that one. I'll take the hit for that. So the only thing I like to say is this. Price predictions are great. You're going to see a lot of them out there, but just take it with a grain of salt. I think that we are in the right place at the right time. And I also believe that I don't really care what's gonna happen at the end of this year or the end of next year. I am a big believer in the four-year cycles. And we talked about this yesterday, why I'm not selling in May and going away. Like the old adage says, I think we've got a lot of room to run over the years. So it always happens like this, having all-time high dip reset. Happened in 2012, 13, 14, 15. Happened again in 2016, there was a Bitcoin halving. And then we had an all-time high. Then we had a massive dip 
you know, when Max Kaiser and uh, fun strat gentleman said uh, 25,000, 100,000, well, we hit 32, 32. Then there's a reset in 2019. Bobby Leo was. And then we had a halving in 2020, all time in 2021. We had a massive dip in a reset. And now 2024, around March or April, we'll have another Bitcoin halving, hopefully an all time high. And then everything will go down again in a dip and a reset. Four year cycles are still in play. And that's why I think we got a lot of room to run. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Of course, let me know one of your most craziest price predictions for Bitcoin over the years, because those are the ones that I could find, but I forget a lot of things. Next up, the Mooch. So this was a pretty good piece. I'd recommend you listen to it. The link's in the description where Anthony Scaramucci uh, from Skybridge Capital says that Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren are in cahoots, which I think we know that. He said uh, both of them are working together to stifle crypto's progress and innovation in the United States. I got to tell you, I agree with him wholeheartedly. And I can tell you why he's probably not too happy right now. And it's something that he said on my show, which was his allocation to Algorand. This is about a minute or so. Just take a listen. This is from uh, Dan Teaches Crypto, 100% free website. Go ahead and sign up. Take a listen to this. Time, I think you're going to be rewarded. Uh, but certainly you can't look at it every day. You know, it's up today. It was down over two weeks. Uh, that's how it works in the uh, Bitcoin marketplace or the cryptocurrency marketplace. Uh, but over three to five years, I think we're going to be very well rewarded, Rob, for what mm -hmm. we're doing. Yeah, and I agree. And uh, so, Anthony, first of all, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Also, thank you for introducing me to Algorand. I did a deep dive video, which I'll be releasing uh, pretty soon. I think that's one of those sleepers. And I think that's one of the things that your clients would be very happy that they invested into. And I we'll hope, get into deep so. into that I, next time. I've got a quarter billion dollars in Algorand right now. I think I think Algorand will be the Google. And I'll just say this quickly. You know, you and I, when we were young youngsters, we were logging onto the internet using Alta Vista. We were using Lycos, America Online, even Prodigy, if you can remember that. Oh, and, yeah. And then, lo and behold, in 1998, this company came along called Google. And people are like, well, why the hell do I need that? I've got all of these other instruments to access the internet. And then people say, well, you know, it's faster. It has machine learning. The algorithms are more widespread. It's going to lead to better outcomes. And lo and behold, uh, Google trumped everybody. And I think that's going to happen with Algorand. I think ultimately. Wow. A quarter of a billion dollars. So I can understand why uh, the Mooch is not too happy with Gary Ginzer and his uh, trusty sidekick, Pocahontas. And I, I will just say this. Uh, the reason, of course, is because SEC labels Al Algorand and five of the tokens as securities in the Bitrix lawsuit. So uh, I can totally understand that. But uh, hey, that's uh, what we get when we let uh, uh, the crazies rule the roost. So let me know what you think about that little piece. And then finally, just to follow up, um, Celsius. Failed crypto lender Celsius auction attracts Arrington and Gemini. So this is actually could be a good story. But again, there's a story behind the story. So Celsius, joining an earlier bid by Nova Wolf Digital Management to manage a restructured version of the bankruptcy crypto company, are Fahrenheit LLC, a consortium backed by TechCrunch Inc. founder Michael Arrington and Blockchain Recovery Investment Committee backed by Gemini Trust, run by the Winklevoss twins. When I first saw Fahrenheit LLC, I thought that was the same company that Celsius was trying to restructure called Kelvin. So I was a little bit off there, but yeah, this is a totally different Michael Arrington and Fahrenheit. And when it talks about Gemini Trust, run by the Winklevoss twins, that is not uh, Gemini the exchange. And uh, I, I tweeted this out and I just asked uh, some people that I trust, such as uh, Tiffany Fong and Aaron Bennett and Simon Dixon. And Sif Tiffany says, I chatted with someone from the Fahrenheit team yesterday. I'll try to post it later. And Simon says, they would simply be the custodians for distributing crypto. And this is, comes back from Dollar Clown. It says, hey, Tiff, please see if you can clear up just how involved Coinbase and Gemini are. There was reports that both were auctioning or being part of the auction. I'm getting a strong vibe they are not. Simon says, no. The plan sponsor would have a custody account with them for distribution. That would be the part with Gemini and Coinbase not financial legal advice. So there you go. So things are looking up and it sounds fantastic, but it's just going to be a little bit the longer ways to run. And of course, the details matter. And lastly, I will say this. There was a, there was a great piece 
last week tonight with John Oliver, and he went over some different things about Celsius. And I think this is actually an old uh, video, not anything recent. But I said, you know what? If you want to laugh and cry, watch this. And I said, uh, Alex Mashinsky and Celsius sent the entire industry back years. And that was the pretty much the darkest thing you could, you could say about it. But then there was one quote from Banana Sats, and I got to give it up. He says, I think he set the industry back, but on the bright side, self-custodial Bitcoin forward. I think over time, this will continue to be the trend. And that's really what it comes down to. There's a lot of things that are out there that just don't really add up and aren't really good, but you have to find those silver linings. And I got to tell you, that is just one of the things. I think moving forward, how many of us are going to remember this? The ones who are here right now and will never trust those types of entities and we'll do a lot of self-custody, which is what the ethos of crypto was supposed to be. Even I got blindsided by it because I let myself get fooled. I think moving forward, this will be the way. The thing only question is, how will the newer people react? And will they actually listen to us, the ones that have come before? Time will tell. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. This industry is not a set it and forget it. It would behoove you to subscribe, at least to somebody, just to keep yourself up to date. That's all we got. Anyhow, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one.